So this is the um, second lecture of the reactions, so it's sugars 3B. I want to finish up uh, the first page, uh, which is that reactions at hydroxyl group and move on to the next page. All right, so um, we're going to take a look at um, how these alcohols could form ethers. Um, a lot of times this kind of chemistry is used um, as protecting groups to do chemistry. Um, so um, one of the uh, reactions that is in your book in forming ethers is um, using excess methyl iodide um, with uh, silver oxide. Um, and what happens is the the uh, whatever monosaccharide you're doing, um, put an H here, it's missing an H on the isomeric carbon. Um, it's going to, um, this is a mild base, it's going to deprotonate the hydrogen. And then this is um, basically a very reactive, very dangerous um, alkyl halide. So it's going to do an SN2 type of reaction in which the oxygen um, attacks the methyl and then kicks out the iodide. So in all the alcohols, you're going to have um, methyl group attached to the oxygen. forming this ether product, all right? Um, another way to make um, ether type of thing in a cyclic acetal uh, way is to use 1,2-diol um, with some kind of carbonyl uh, under acidic conditions. And then you've seen this before, making a cyclic acetal and, and, and the byproduct will be the water, all right? So if you... Um, look at the sugar, um, look at all the alcohols that are one, two. So we're now using sugar as source of one, two dials, just as in this example, all right? But there's a um, restriction to that. So this is just acetone is our source of the carbonyl. In order for it to work for sugars, the 1,2-diol has to be cis. All right, so to form this ring, um, on top of the ring that is in it, it's constrained as it is. So if the OHs are, are trans to each other, then it's not going to work, okay? So for example, uh, when, you know, remember when we talk about cis and trans, it's not anything to do with axials and equatorials, but whether or not they are below the plane or on the opposite uh, side of the plane. So um, in carbon one and two, they're both down. See how they're pointing down? So they're cis to each other. But notice between carbon, uh, the alcohol in carbon two and carbon three, this is pointing up, this is pointing down. So they're trans to each other. So the alcohol on C2 and C3 cannot form this cyclic acetal. Whereas carbon 3 and carbon 4, they're both up, so it could form a, a cyclic acetal. And um, this one is a little far away. Um, so what happens when you um, form a cyclic acetal with the acetone is that the 3 and the 4 will form the cyclic acetal because they're both on top of the plane of the ring and then the 1 and 2 will form cyclic acetals as well um, driving two waters off all right so this is an example of see how when you protect this and protect this this alcohol now is open to do a uh, different kind of chemistry so this is the kind of um, protecting type of chemistry that a lot of sugar chemists use okay so I'll go back to this to make sure you um, do all these problems. And we're now ready to move on to the uh, third type of um, reaction at a hydroxyl group, which is glycoside formation. And that by far, of all the reactions that we went over, is the most important. All right, so I'm gonna put a, total, a star on this. And um, the reason why uh, this is so important is because the glycoside linkage, which we will talk about in a bit, um, are the most 
important biologically because um, a lot of the uh, biologically active or important molecules are are connected by glycosidic linkage, all right? So for example, it's the basis of how disaccharides are made and polysaccharides are made. And a lot of times whenever you have a sugar linked to uh, uh, something else like steroid, um, there's a, a, a lot of drugs that are look like that and they're all connected uh, by a glycoside linkage. So let's define what it is, okay? So whenever you are talking about glycoside, okay, notice the I'd ending, not an O's ending. So whenever you go from O's, like a glucose, to I'd, you are now talking about glycoside. And this glycoside is just basically a fancy name for acetal of carbohydrates. So remember the chemistry of, let me just briefly go over, um, okay, so I'm not going to draw in all the OHs, but let's say this is the glucose uh, with the uh, important carbon, um, endomeric carbon with OH, you could have an alpha or beta, right? And this is hemiacetal, correct? Which is what uh, most of monosaccharides exist in, in, in solution. Now, if you take that and then further do um, another, react with another alcohol, then what you get is a second molecule of alcohol adds to the OH, extrudes water, um, and what you get is an acetal, correct? And that is what we call glycoside in sugar chemistry, right? So let's review the um, acetal, um, what it does, how different it is from hemiacetal, right? So glycosides are not in equilibrium with open chain form, all right? So this is very important in, in learning about this chemistry, all right? So it's more stable than hemiacetal, especially under neutral or basic conditions, all right? Well, not muta rotate, all right, and not a reducing sugar. And the only time it's susceptible to opening up is under a uh, hydrolysis condition, which is acid and water. Then it will go back to hemiacetal. In other words, hydrolysis, you know, the reverse reaction, which you already are very familiar with, okay? So you have to keep this in mind uh, when you um, look at the chemistry. Like, so, for example, when you have multiple choice questions, which of the following sugars will not mutate rotate? Which of the following sugars is not reducing sugar? They're asking exactly the same thing. You're looking at the structures of each sugar and asking yourself, are they hemiacetals or, or acetals? If they are hemiacetals, then they will mute rotate and be a reducing sugar because it opens and closes. But if it's an acetal, then it can't do that. All right. So how does um, let's go over um, how it becomes from hemiacetal to acetal? It's the same exact mechanism as you've seen before, except now we're going to look at with sugar. So we have the hemiacetal, the anomeric OH. It's going to grab the acid and it's going to form um, OH2, right? So that's going to be um, positive charged. And now that's a good leaving group, so it's going to uh, be pushed out to form this uh, intermediate. And then now this intermediate uh, with the plus charge on the oxygen uh, is susceptible for attack at the anomeric carbon. And here's my uh, alcohol. 
all right so this is my ROH and it's going to either attack from the top or bottom it has equal chance to do either one so you basically get a mixture if it attacks from the top then you have the um, alcohol attached to the um, on the equatorial position if it attacks from the bottom you have the alcohol um, in the axial position and the oxygens have a plus charge so then the acid has to be regenerated by being deprotonated um, and then you get this um, methyl the name the way you name it is this is referring to the R group of the uh, glycoside so the methyl this is beta because they're on the same side the CH2OH and the OCH3 D uh, glucoprenoside notice the I um, in both of them because now you are at the acetal stage all right and this will be methyl alpha D glucoprenoside all right so you get a mixture of um, these two acetals uh, from this reaction all right so um, you should be able to do very simple uh, chemistry uh, with these um, and I've given you some uh, drill problems so look up these unless it's glucose um, which you're supposed to already know the structure of uh, but fructose and galactose um, look it up and then draw it out and and you should be able to do um, all these reactions um, and be able to give me draw me the products of these and um, give an example of glycoside formation by drawing a, um, a glycoside made from glucose and phenol all right um, page 1145 in Klein has all the structures of the monosaccharides for you to be able to do this um, and then um, you should also be able to do 24.25 and 24.26 all right and um, I want you to really, really um, feel comfortable with uh, um, the glycoside reaction because the next lecture is um, about disaccharides and um, that's how disaccharides are formed by taking one sugar with another sugar by linking it together in the glycoside bond. That's how they are stuck together in disaccharides. All right, so that concludes um, this lecture.